Ladies and gentlemen, what would slave reparations look like in 2019? The story came out in the New York Times. And, you know, this country knows it's long overdue. You know, they can say no, 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 all they want. But see, the judgment is here. It really is. Look at all of the devastation going on in America right now. This country is on, <laughs> it's in free fall at this point because they are never going to do the right thing. So we'll just sit back, y'all, and pull up a chair and enjoy the festivities because that's exactly what's going on. And I want to thank uh, Brother LVZ. He showed us a tornado going on in D.C. in the gingerfied area. <laughs> now, you know, tornadoes in the hood is practically non-existent. So few, you can barely talk about anything because they just don't come around us. Not like that. Um, the whole time I've been in the town that I'm in, I've seen one tornado that tore up a, a few of the homes, not all of them, it wasn't even, it was really one block that got devastated. But in uh, some of the uh, trees and everything around the businesses were uprooted, but the businesses themselves, they really didn't take any kind of damage. And it was just like one block over from me. So that's about the only one that's hit around here so the devastation is here. It really is. I saw what happened in Missouri, thanks to the true royal family, and also looking at articles online. We saw the polar vortex this year and how devastating that was. We saw all of the major flooding, which is still going on in the Midwest, which has virtually wiped out farming in those areas. And now you have Trump's trade war, which is going to devastate farming and retail even further. So, no, things are not looking up for America. Things are looking really bleak. If you're surprised that the issue of reparations for Black Americans has taken so long to resolve, blame the president, President Andrew Johnson. As the Civil War wound down in 1865, General William T. Sherman made the promise that would come to be known as 40 acres and a mule, which, of course, you know, America don't keep any promises, y'all. <laughs> we know that. Um, redistributing a, a huge track of Atlantic coastline to Black Americans. Uh, recently freed from bondage, President Abraham Lincoln and Congress gave their approval, and soon 40,000 freedmen in the South had started to plant and build. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know where those Black towns were on the East Coast, look no further than Highway I-95. I-95 uh, when they built I-95, they took out all the black towns and put the highway in. So it's almost like you never knew those black towns were there. But that's how they mask in disguise where all of the black towns were after Reconstruction. So every time you drive on I-95, just know you are driving on the very place where your forefathers had their towns and those towns largely were torched by white mobs. But the history is still there. You can still learn about it. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, the 40 acres and a mule, what a joke. Okay, so within months of Lincoln's assassination, through President Johnson, rescinded the order and returned the land to its former owners. In other words, he took the land that was given to us and gave it back to white folks. 
All right. So uh, Congress made another attempt to compensate, but Johnson vetoed it. Now, in early phase of 2020 presidential campaign, the question of compensating Black Americans for suffering under slavery and other forms of racial injustice has resurfaced, and it's not going to go away. The current effort focuses on a congressional bill that would commission a study on reparations, a version of legislation first introduced in 1989. Several Democratic uh, presidential hopefuls have declared their support, including Kamala Harris of California, Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, Cory Booker of New Jersey, and former Housing and Urban Development Secretary Julian uh, Castro. But you know what? Nobody was for it until we start questioning it. Man, get out of here. You can't trust none of these politicians. And not only that, as soon as you start bringing up the issue of money, they all start chucking and jiving. If the latest rival has excited supporters, it has worried some party moderates who fear that such an effort would alienate many voters. Polls have shown a big deficit in popular support. While a majority of Black Americans in the 2016 Marist poll supported reparations, white rejected it by an overwhelmingly margin. Now, that's really shocking. White people rejected reparations, y'all. Ooh. <laughs> uh, the reparations issue raises profound moral, social, and political considerations. Still, the economic nuts and bolts of such a program have gotten scant public attention. Who would be paid? How much? Where would the money come from? You didn't question all of that when money was given to the Jews, the Native Americans, the Japanese. So no, we're not answering those questions either. If you didn't pose it to anybody else, don't pose it to us. Through the decades of handful of scholars have taken a shot at creating a roadmap Here's what to be reckoned with. When James Foreman, a civil rights pioneer who later served briefly as the Black Panther Party's foreign minister, demanded $500 million in reparations in his 1969 Black Manifesto, he grounded his argument in the indisputable fact unpaid slave labor helped build um, the American economy, creating vast wealth that African-Americans were barred from sharing. The manifesto called for white Christian churches and Jewish synagogues to pay for their pro- uh, projects like a Black University and Southern Land Bank. Um, <clears throat> we have helped build the most industrial country in the world. It declared at the same time that racist white Americans have exploited our resources, our minds, our bodies, our labors. Absolutely. Another civil rights leader, Bayard Rustin, responded, if my great grandfather picked cotton for 50 years, then he may deserve some money. But He's dead and gone, and nobody owes me anything. Well, they don't owe you nothing, but they owe us, the ones that are asking. I'll take the money on the behalf of my forefathers. So if you don't want that money, Bayard Rustin, you fork over your father's 50 years of cotton picking money over to me. I'll take it. I don't have no problem taking it. The question of reparations, however, extends far beyond the roughly 4 million people who were enslaved. When the Civil War started, okay, um, let me just go down a bit. Legalized discrimination, which still goes on today, y'all, still goes on today. Um, And you see that in the police shootings. Nobody gets treated like Black people in this country when we are shot unarmed. Nobody. And state sanctioned brutality, murder, 
um, dispossession and disenfranchisement continue long after the war ended. It continues even in 2019. The history profoundly handicapped Black Americans' ability to create and accumulate wealth, as well as to gain access to jobs, housing, education, and health care. For every dollar a typical uh, white household uh, holds, a uh, Black one has 10 cents. It is this cumulative effect that justifies the payment of reparations to descendants of slaves long dead, supporters say. Equality is not likely to be obtained without some form of reparations. David H. Swinton, an economist and former president of Benedict College, wrote in 1990 collection, The Wealth of Races. who will be paid. Nearly 47 million Americans identify themselves as Black or African Americans in the latest census. And ladies and gentlemen, when if we do get reparations, you, you can expect to see the $5 Black people crop up. Everybody's going to be digging out a Black grandmother, a Black grandfather, a, a Black this and a Black that in the family. Okay, so expect the $5 black people, y'all. Expect the $5 black people because <laughs> they're coming. A vast majority are descendants from slaves, but others are more recent migrants. Who would qualify for a payment? You know who qualifies for a payment. That's a dumb question. William A. Um, Doherty. Junior, an economist at Duke, uh, Duke University and a leading scholar on reparations suggests two qualifying conditions, uh, having at least one ancestor who was enslaved in the United States and having identified oneself as African-American on a legal document for at least a decade before the approval of any reparations. The 10-year rule he said, would help screen out anyone trying to cash in on a windfall. According to these criteria, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Winfrey, there's a reason why I jacked up her name, who has traced her DNA to slaves captured in West Africa in the early 19th century would qualify. Former President Barack Obama uh, the son of a white American mother and a Kenyan father would not. No, he really shouldn't. Okay. So this person is also saying roughly 30 million Americans would be eligible. Tracing genealogy back to the slave owning era is difficult. Actually, no, it isn't. I did it. Okay. I know who the slaves were in my family. And I can give you their names and everything and tell you what their location was and what plantation they were on. I got all of that information. So no, it's not as hard as you think. I did it. If I can do it, many other people can do it. But the search begins by comparing the 1870 census. That's good because I went all the way back to the 1600s and found my people. So <laughs> good. 1870, that's easy. That's real easy for me. Uh, when freed slaves were first counted by name with the one taken in 16, I mean, 1860, when they weren't. Other sources include military service and pension records, slave ship, uh, manifest, and estate and inheritance documents. And I have um, quite a few that were in the military in my family. You know, somebody in my family fought in every single war in America, every single one. As for taking account of current wealth, a reparations program would link potential payouts to income and asset levels. Okay, how much would the recipients get paid? So. 
they're talking attaching a dollar figure to a program for reparations resemble a wheel of fortune. I really, it doesn't have to. It really doesn't have to. So um, the astronomical $17 trillion in total over the decades, some economists have tried to come up with a quantifiable basis for a fair sum. Mr. Swinton, for example, estimated in 1983 that 40 to 60 percent of the difference between black and white income would be attributed to past and continuing discrimination and put the figure at 500 billion. Hmm, maybe that's where that Marianne woman got her 500 billion figure from. Who knows? Some economists, a uh, uh, Marianne Williamson, I think, um, some economists evaluated labor share of the slave system profits in cotton and tobacco. And, you know, my parents actually picked both when they were in the South, uh, both cotton and tobacco. Others have looked at what slaves would have earned if they had been paid wages plus interest after subtracting housing and food costs. One study looked at uh, 20th century statistics estimating how much Blacks earned because of decades of discrimination. Another examined the value of Black wealth lost or destroyed after slavery ended through practices of redlining that denied lending or insurance to African-American communities or organized riots like the 1921 rampage that leveled the Greenwood neighborhood of Tulsa, known as Black Wall Street. Oh, well, you got a lot of riots to add in there, okay? Over 200 Black towns destroyed. A lot more riots need to be added to that list. A reoccurring theme that has uh, to return to the first official action Promise of 40 acres and a mule, Sherman drew up his order after posing this directive to a group of black ministers and leaders, state what manner you think you can take care of yourselves. First of all, I don't think black ministers are in touch enough with the community to really answer those kind of questions. So I, I no, no, uh-uh. Doherty, Mr. Doherty has been mauling that question for years and is writing a book on reparations with Kirsten Mullen due out next year. He begins with the cost of an acre in 1865, about $10. 40 acres divided among a family of four comes to 10 acres per person or about $100 for each of the 4 million farmer, uh, former slaves, um, taking account of compounding interest and inflation, Mr. Doherty has put the present value at 2.6 trillion. All right, so he's talking strictly about land, y'all. Land only, that's what he's talking about assuming roughly 30 million descendants of ex-slaves, he concluded it worked out to about 80,000 a person. Okay, well, that's just his figures. In my opinion, it's gotta be way higher than that. To get a sense of the scale, consider the United States budget has a year 4.7 trillion, of course, varying any critical assumption can add or subtract billions or trillions of dollars. Look, they lose a trillion dollars a year alone on Wall Street every year. That's how much they lose. Um, of course, varying any critical assumption, all right, can add or subtract, all right. Um, Thomas Kramer, an associate professor of public policy at the University of Connecticut, used the same starting point, 40 acres and a mule, 
but a different method in a study published last year. He used the current average price of agricultural land and figured that 40 acres of farmland and buildings would amount to roughly $123,000. If all of the 4 million slaves counted in 1860 census had been able to take advantage of that offer, it would have totaled more than $486 billion today, or about $16,200 for each descendant of slave. What form of payment, um, compensation programs can take many forms. <laughs> You know, no, you know, as soon as they throw the word program in, um, no, no, you, you didn't program the Jews. You didn't program the Japanese. I don't want to hear nothing about no programs now. Y'all can get off of that program talk. Compensation programs can take many forms. The United States, after a congressional study, people of Japanese descent, were forced into internment camps during World War I, received $20,000 in 1988, and a formal apology. Since 1952, Germany has paid more than 70 billion in reparations through various programs, primarily to Jewish victims of the Nazi regime. Okay, so since 1952, all the way up until now, they've been consistently paying these people reparations. And these very same people that are getting reparations are telling you, you don't deserve any. But we went through more hell than they did. Okay, moving on, because that pisses me off. Um, and they continue to deliver hundreds of millions of dollars each year. Payment vary from a lump sum distributed to individuals to a monthly pension based on years of working in a slave labor camp. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I read an article last year. They said some of these Jews that are descendants of the people that were in the concentration camps, some of them get up to $400,000 a year. And some of the grandchildren get like a hundred thousand dollars a year but they're bitching and complaining to us about not getting anything i mean the nerve money is also given to organizations to cover home care for older survivors or for grants a small portion goes for research education and documentation a reparations program in the united states could likewise adopt a single method or several at once. No, you're not going to do no drop one check and it's all over. No, uh-uh. You won't be paying for years to come. Um, all right, so reparation programs in the United States would, could likewise adopt a single payment. Nope, ain't going to be no single payment. Nope, uh-uh, mm -mm. or several at once. Families could get a one-time check, receive vouchers for medical insurance or college, or have access to a trust fund to finance a business or a home. No. No, slavery went on from the 1600s all the way through 1865. No, you're going to have to pay yearly. I'm sorry. No, no yearly. Okay. Um, argues that for both of substantive and symbolic reasons, some important components must be direct payment to eligible recipients. Absolutely. You ain't getting out of this whole thing without a payment. Sorry. Many payments. Other scholars have emphasized different features. Roy L. Brooks, 
a law professor at the University of San Diego, and Arthur of Atonement and Forgiveness. A new model for Black reparations has reservations about what he calls the settlement model, a legalistic approach that looks backwards to compensate victims for demonstrable financial losses. He prefers what he calls the atonement model, emphasizing long-term investments in education, housing, and businesses that build up wealth. Um, according to the Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances, the median wealth of black household is $16,000 compared with $163,000 for whites. Reparations are not likely to eliminate the racial wealth gap, but could narrow it somewhat. Low income families with the fewest assets would benefit the most. Um, no, it should um, clear up the racial gap. No, you should not be falling short. Plain and simple. No, it's all or nothing. No, 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 no. You, you see how they always, well, we'll give you something, but you still can't be as rich as us. That's what they're really saying. That's what she's really saying. You, 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 we'll give you something, but it ain't going to clear up the gap. We can't make you as rich as us, but we'll give you something. Uh-uh. Nope. It's got to clear up the gap. The biggest, ugh, the biggest economic objection is that any meaningful program would be unaffordable. Like other government spending, reparations would ultimately be paid for by some kind of tax or fee or borrowing, says through government bonds. We don't care where you get the damn money from. Just get it. Okay, just get it. And as far as your government spending, cut back on your government spending so you can give that money to us in reparations. Such a program would almost certainly require increasing the federal deficit, don't care, and be structured over time. That's your problem. Okay, that, that's nothing for black people to worry about. That's your problem. Those less worried about a growing deficit could argue that reparations would be a boon over the long run, lifting people out of poverty and improving the earning potential and buying power. So ladies and gentlemen, no, we are not taking one payment and that's it from America. America's gonna pay for years to come because slavery went on for years to come and still going on now in the prisons. That being said, we ain't taking no one payment and walking away. You gonna be digging in your pockets on a yearly basis to us. But ladies and gentlemen, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. This one will definitely be demonetized, y'all. <laughs> Y'all come on over there to the podcast and support me. And don't miss my podcast, y'all. I put them out every single day. You can go to my community tab and look for the link. Peace, family.